And, and it would be much better, I think you would agree, I think if Ivy League. Yeah, one of the yeah. Ten Commandments had been, don't keep slaves. No, it wouldn't. And I'll go back to George R. R. Martin and Daenerys Stormborn. Now, I'm going to do a whole other talk on the problem of slavery. But to, to kind of give a synopsis now, when the U.S. Constitution was being formed, was, I was reading an article about a lot of details with this. One of the reasons, I mean, slavery is terrible. I don't think we give credit for how evil it is. Slavery is like, have you ever seen, you pulled up grass out of the ground, there's all these little tiny roots that go everywhere. The sod, sod roots, the roots in your lawn, small, roots of small plants just wander and go everywhere. Imagine roots like that. Slavery has roots like that. And imagine those roots growing up into your arm and all throughout your body. Now, as long as the plant is alive, the roots are flexible. If you kill the plant, they turn into twigs and they poke you and you get contusions all over inside and you start to hemorrhage and you die. So you, this plant is inside of you that you, imagine slavery of and growing inside of you like, like the roots of, of, of grass, of sod, of a lawn, and they're all throughout your body. If the plant dies, they become hard twigs and they break you inside and you die. You have to keep it alive for you to stay alive. This is how evil slavery is. How do you get it out? Are you gonna cut the person open and do surgery? No way. You have to get it out very, very, very slowly. It's like a horror movie. That's how slavery is. Uh, okay, maybe you disagree. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do the har. I'm not gonna do the the, the, the Ivy League uh, Harvard archetype style things. Say I'm back on you. I'm not gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna put forth this argument as to 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 why it's this evil and why it does take such time. Now George R. R. Martin. I'm going to touch briefly, was uh, is loved because of his realistic stories, uh, mainly that a lot of people die. People like seeing characters die in, in, in a TV show and in a movie and stuff because movies of everybody living and uh, in real life people die. And George R.R. R. Martin was also looking at a lot of things like supplies and, and you know armies and how long they can stay here and how long a siege can last. And he, one of his friendly critiques of Tolkien is that Tolkien doesn't include that when he talks about his armies. Well, another one of the things that people like about Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire, George R. R. Martin, is that when Daenerys Stormborn goes in and frees all the slaves, it, it really, it, more people die because she broke it too fast. And that's a reality that she has to deal with because it's not, I'm not defending this is not a defense of how good and wonderful slavery is. It's an argument for how incredibly evil it is. If you think, Sam, that one of the Ten Commandments in that terrible, horrible, dark age that we fortunately didn't see, if one of the Ten Commandments was able to abolish slavery and that it should have been abolishing slavery in the Ten Commandments at that time, then you do not grasp how incredibly evil slavery really is. 400 years in America, and we're still dealing with it. It was outlawed in the 1860s, and in the 1960s, people were fighting just to be treated equally, and that's happened, and now we're still, I mean, we're going 60 years later, and we're still having problems with racial tension in America. That's one evil thing, and I don't think, if it could, I mean, I, Sam, you're the solution. If you're right, you're the solution to civil rights. You'll have Sam come and make a declaration and everything's going to become pure. Snap his finger. It doesn't work that way, buddy. And you can't make that art. You can't sit and stand and see. That's what you're doing. You're standing in judgment over the Bible and you can't do that. You're saying, well, Ten Commandments are silly because it should have had one of these. Don't tell me that it's a good book. That's where you're going with this. And no, God was brilliant in what he was doing. So there you have an argument, uh, you see it dramatized. George R. R. Martin, okay, fiction doesn't prove reality, but that's an illustration. It's a story. It's a narrative. Narrative. And from, from George R. R. Martin's narrative, people like it because he thinks it's realistic and so does his audience. And George R. R. Martin thinks so. Well, the framers of the Constitution also thought so from their experience because they tried to snap their fingers and outlaw slavery with the Constitution, but the South wouldn't let them. So there was this back and forth, and there were a lot of other little laws that, that got involved with the Northwest Territory things and runaway slaves. And the conclusion basically was, look, South, you can't have your cake and eat it too. 
you can't have all these slaves and then have all this massive representation in Congress if they're not allowed to vote and not have to pay your taxes. Well, South didn't want to pay taxes for all of their slaves by, by registering a higher population. So, the sneak, it seems evil, uh, but the, the, the sneaky virus that eventually undid slavery was that a slave only counts as three-fifths of a person since he can't vote. And uh, that actually began to undermine the South and by pure population, I mean, these, are, these are half people in, in, in the South's view. It's a terrible situation, but their populations have to be smaller. Ha, ha, ha. So, the North had a larger vote and, and they eventually started voting against, outvoting the, the South and there was the Civil War. And they knew because these were smart people, you don't, good, bad, you don't get to be in charge by being an idiot. And these people managing, drafting the Constitution that wanted to end slavery, knew, we're not going to be able to do this here. This is like roots into a body. If we kill the plant, the roots harden and the person dies. This is so evil, it's going to take centuries. It's that evil. And they, they understood the reality. They did not condone it. They, they set those devices in place by, by three-fifths of a person. Fine. Three-fifths of a person, as far as population goes, you get less representation in Congress for those slaves. Those do not count as your population because you're not letting them vote. When that, when, when that, or, you know, you're not treating them fairly, so their vote's going to be less whenever that panned out. Whenever that panned out. So, you, you, um, with... Uh, you know, correct my facts on that history. So I'll, I'll, I invite you, Sam, to, to talk to me about uh, why it took a long time to get rid of the slaves in America. And if George R. R. Martin's opinion's right, and if the need to have this long process with uh, the, framing the Constitution to get slaves out takes a long time also, then maybe God was right when he put those devices in place and prophesied the future about slowly eradicating slavery. And it began with treating slaves fairly and um, that's how evil it is. But, but there we have the prophecy in the future. It's going to be so good when we have employment. I'm going to move on and continue listening. There, there's certainly one we could swap out for that one. No, no. And, Jesus, and so that way it would have been much easier for Christians to have fought against slavery. Uh, and yeah, nah. only, it only would have been easier for people that were lazy on their hermeneutics. All they would have had to do was, was quote Philemon. In fact, the reason that they were fighting against slavery and not winning is because of how evil slavery is. The truth from the Bible is there, arguing against slavery. God did not, was, wasn't going to snap his fingers. It was up to us to end slavery. We asked, why doesn't God end slavery? Why doesn't God end bad things? Why don't you? Why don't we deal with the issues in our hearts so we can have real conversations with each other and hash out these political issues much, much, much more quickly instead of all this grandstanding back and forth and trying to prove the other guy to be an idiot? Let, let's, let's have actual understanding and then these political issues will get dealt with faster. Slavery was that evil and we're not going to snap our fingers and make it go away.